Hey everybody, welcome back to MoFro3. I'm Wayne, and today I'm going to just give a little mid-August update on the, on the reef tank here. Um, I did add a new fish. I added two, and only one made it. Um, I have a blonde naso. His name's Hollywood. And I also added a yellow tang. And the yellow tang, they were both in my quarantine tank over here for nine weeks. And the yellow tang was small, and he gave Hollywood, I mean... Every day he was just trying to whip him and you know try to be dominant. And Hollywood was really friendly, never fought back or anything. And uh, I put him in here, and I thought for sure Hollywood was going to have a rough time with these other tanks because he was so so timid. And he never ate anything but but seaweed. My Julian Sprungs. Um, once in a while, maybe like a small little bite here or there of mysis, but that was it. And uh, when I put them both in here. He did fine. None of the fish messed with him. But when I put the yellow tang in here, which I named him Karma, they killed him in six hours. It was, I couldn't get him out. It was ugly, you know. Uh, Phantom here, my purple tang, they have little barbs right by their tails, and that's what they usually fight with. And uh, I think he snapped one off in the yellow tang, because the yellow tang just had a gash in the side of him. And it looks like he's missing part of that that little spine coming off his off his tail there. I'll have to get a close-up and show you that. But Hollywood's doing good, and I'm thinking about what kind of direction I want to go with the reef tank here. You know, I really want some more SPS, and my bio load's pretty heavy right now. So Thanos here, my trigger, is going to get caught today. And I'm gonna go turn him in. I mean, I like him, he's a cool fish, but honestly, I got enough fish in here and I want two blood shrimp and I can't put him in there with him in here because he'll eat him. So he's getting traded in today. I'm going to get uh, two blood shrimp and I'm going to get, if they still have it up at Pet Connection, a mated pair of, I think it was Extreme Snowflake Onyx clownfish and then I'll throw them in the quarantine for you know eight, nine weeks and see if we can't get them to host these anemones here. So let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my fish trap here that I haven't used in a while, and I'll show you exactly how I do it. Okay, it just has uh, three suction cups here. I'm gonna stick it in the tank right here. Kind of push it to the side there. And then what I do is I just have one of my little scuba diving weights, and there's uh, piece of fishing line here that I just put a little knot in here and I just set this in the knot as like a counterweight just to hold the uh, the trap in place really good because them little suction cups won't hold it. My glass window here let's see how fast we can catch him he was when I was trying to catch uh, the other tang, or the other trigger I had, the, the blue Niger, um, he was in here all the time, so. This is my first attempt at catching him too, so I'm kind of hoping I can get him in there in about less than a minute. It's kind of what I'm hoping for, but sometimes you just never know. You never, never know. And I'm not even gonna use mice. I'm just gonna use some seaweed. And uh, my magnet here. Yeah, he's already in there. Go get it, buddy. <laughs> I love this trap, man. This thing is just straight up awesome. Awesome, awesome. I can't believe how easy that was. That was awesome. So let's get him in the bag and we're taking off to the fish stove. All right, so I got a little bag here already set up. So 
I am just gonna pick him up by hand. Drop him right in the bag. All right, I'll be back in about an hour. All right, so I just got back from my uh, local fish store pet connection. They didn't have the the clowns that I wanted, but they did have this uh, these uh, Mocha Vinci Oscillaris here, and they look pretty cool, man. So they had another pair of them, so I got two of them. Let's see in the bag there. All right, and I will go through my quarantine process on, on what I do and how I dip them before I put them in quarantine. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start acclimating two more blood shrimp. I'll tell you what, man, if, if Scrooge comes out and he eats these, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> I swear to God I will. $160 in shrimp getting eaten. It would wreck my day. Got a little hanger on it for hanging it over the glass, which is pretty cool. Let's see what we're at here. And I'm just gonna drip these guys for probably about 45 minutes to an hour. And we're gonna get started over here. All right, so what I do for my fish before they go into quarantine is, is I use this product right here, Safety Stop. Uh, it's a two part, so they're sitting uh, part A for 45 minutes and then part B for about 45 minutes. Um, I do have an air stone in there and I have a heater sitting right behind it and I'm monitoring the temperature in there because a lot of times when you, uh, you run an air stone in there, you get a lot of evaporation and it, uh, it cools the water pretty quick. So I'm sitting at the 77.5, which is right to my likings, and then they're gonna go into a QT tank. All right, so here's my two blood shrimp. Both are looking good, looking healthy. So you can see he's got this complete spine right there, or the barb on the back of his tail on this side. So you can see it's, it's only partially there. It's not like it is on this side where there's a full one. All right, so here's my uh, Mocha Vinci clownfish swimming around. They're in the QT tank. It's been about 12 hours, so they're looking good. The last time I lost all my fish, it was from, I'm pretty sure it was from my two clownfish that I, I only quarantined for a month, and I put velvet in the main display, and I wiped out my whole livestock, so I'm never gonna make that mistake again. Um, if you're gonna get into the hobby and you're looking to have fish, you either buy them all at once, or you quarantine them or else you know it's it's devastating you know if you got fish I had some fish for like three four years and you know when they die you, you get pretty pissed so this is the best way to do it quarantine them make sure they're healthy before you put them into the new display you don't want to be bringing any diseases into uh, into your main tank but these guys look pretty cool man I'm digging them so for my quarantine tank, what I got here, I just got one rock that's dedicated just for the quarantine tank. I have a little sponge filter over here, a heater here, a little sea cam ammonia card. I have a little uh, reef octopus skimmer on here and a little hang on the back filter. And a little uh, W10, the new, uh, the new J-Bow pump. So that's it, that's my quarantine system. That's what I use. That's pretty much how it runs and it runs 24 seven and you know, I never shut it down. So just in case if you ever have an issue, you, you know, you gotta have some place to put your fish. And with this up being cycled and it's been running for, you know, six, seven months now, everything's good to go. Yeah, I can't wait to see these guys, man. Hopefully I can, uh, use the tube method and get them hosting that an enemy right away. Alright, we'll take care. Thanks for hanging out and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.